Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Arma Guides. Today we will be taking a look at the process of creating capture points that you can have players fight over. So let's go ahead and get right into this. The first thing you're going to need is a sector module. So go up to your systems and then go to multiplayer and then select sector and just place this down. And now you need to edit the attributes of this route to function as intended. So double left click on it to open its attributes. And there will be two things you're going to need to worry about in here. The first is under system transformation and the rest is under system specific sector. So first let's go ahead and look at transformation. The thing you need to worry about in here is the size. This is where you designate how big this will be. This is in meters. And if I set this to 100, you can see it's now an oval. It's 100 meters in length and 50 meters wide, and the height goes all the way up to the very top of the world. And then if I set this back to 50, then it goes back to being a circle. Um, that's something I just recommend playing around with. You can do whatever you want as far as the size. You can have it encompass the entire map and make the entire map a capture point, or you could have it be super small and have it be specific buildings. So you could have, say, a town people have to go through and clear and as they clear buildings, they could capture each individual building. And of course, as you can see, you have this nice gray circle that indicates what all is in the sector and what all is not. And of course, this only shows up in the Eden editor. This will not actually be visible in the mission. So once you have figured that out, you're going to want to move on to system specific sector. And these are all the rest of the settings for this module. So the name, this is a name that will show up to players and on the map. For the actual capture point, you can do whatever you want for this. For the sake of this guide, I will simply be using test. Designation, this is a single letter or number that will show up on the icon for this. So whenever you capture a point, a bar will show up in the top right of the screen, indicating that you have captured that point and it will show the enemy points and things like that. So this will be the letter that shows up in there. It will also be the letter that shows up on the point on the map. Um, if you leave this blank, it will use the first letter or number of the name. I usually just leave this blank. That's what I recommend you do, but it is completely up to you. Seize reward. This is how many points are awarded to your team whenever you capture. This works off of the vanilla scoreboard system. So if Op4 captures this and it's set to 50 points, Op4 will receive 50 points. It's fairly simple. Expression. You can set a line of code in here and any time the sector is captured, it will execute that code. This is slightly more advanced stuff I'll be talking about in the future. And unless you know basic coding for Arma 3, this will be completely useless and you can just leave it blank. Now the ownership limit, this determines how many players have to be in the sector compared to the enemy team for them to be able to capture it. If it's set to zero, anyone can walk into the sector and capture no matter how many enemy players are in it. And if it's set to one, then there can't be any enemy players in it at all. You can only have members of your team in the sector when capturing. And it works in decimals anywhere between one to zero. You can do 0 0.1, you can do 0 0.05, completely up to you. I recommend just playing around with that. I usually set this to one. It's what I find to work best. It works very well. It's simplistic and in the end leads to a lot more firefights, especially when fighting over these sectors, which I like to see that in my missions. And then default owner, this allows you to set someone who by default will have control of the sector whenever the mission starts. I like to leave this as nobody unless I am making capturable starting positions for the server. So say I had a big military base you start at and it can be captured by the enemy. I would of course have it be controlled by say blue four by default and then someone else could come and capture it. But if you're doing something different, I recommend just leaving this as nobody. And task owners, this basically assigns the team a task, telling them where they need to go. It creates a marker on the map, creates a marker they can see in game, telling them how far they are from it. And they can open up their journal and view the task. They can view the title, they can view the description. Um, I usually just leave this on no one. You can set it to everyone, only default sector, sector owner, everyone except the default sector owner. It's completely up to you. I find no one to work best for what I typically do. Task title, this is the title of the task that will show up in your journal and game. You can set this to whatever you want. Um, I recommend keeping it fairly simplistic because you can go more in depth using the description. So 
Again, these just the task title and the description, those are super simplistic. All it does is show up in your journal and explain what you need to do and it shows you where you need to go. And then infantry costs, wheeled vehicle costs, all of these, this is how fast each of these unit types will capture. Um, of course, the higher it is, the faster it will capture, the lower it is, the slower they'll capture. If it's set to zero, that unit type cannot capture it at all. So for instance, right now, tracked vehicle cost is four. So tanks will capture faster than anything else. If I set this to zero, tanks would not be able to capture at all. Uh, you can play around with this, do whatever you want. I personally find the default one, two, four, zero, two, two to work the best. If you're setting up capture points in the water, make sure you up the naval cost because naval vehicles cannot capture otherwise. Now that's all you need to worry about as far as the settings. Now you need to define who is actually competing for the sector. This is super simple. Under your systems, go over to logic entities and then go down to sides. And then here you'll find blue four, independent and op four. Now for each team you want to be able to compete, you will place one of these down. So it's fairly simple. So if I wanted only blue four and independent to compete, then I would put down only a blue four and independent. If I wanted all three to compete, I would put them all down. So for the sake of this guide, I'll be using all three. Once you have placed them, simply select them, right click go the connect, sync to, and then sync them to the sector. And that's all there is to it. It's all set up now. Both or all of Blue 4, Independent, and Op 4 will be able to fight over the sector. They'll be able to capture it. They'll be able to lose control of it. They'll gain points for capturing it. And that's really all there is to it. Important thing to note is there is no current logic entity for civilian. So the only way to have civilian compete over sectors is through using scripts, which that gets into a lot more advanced stuff that we'll be talking about in the future. For now, this is all you need to worry about. This is set up. You could have the teams compete over this. They can gain points, lose points, really anything you might need them to do. So that's everything there is to this guide. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.